like all of us, I'm trying to keep growing. And so um, I've been reading parts of the book, Coactive Coaching. I'm, I'm a career and personal coach. And um, I found one particular chapter um, very interesting. And I wanted to make sure that I was uh, not violating any copyright laws. So I've uh, excerpted small chunks. Um, actually, it's not from the latest edition, but I've just just checked the latest edition and uh, the concepts are pretty much the same. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to read you those excerpts and where I agree or disagree or amplify, I'm going to intersperse that. Anyway, um, I'm going to start by reading. And I, as I said, I will uh, interject with my own comments and I'll let you know when those occur. The primary building block for all coactive coaching, coactive meaning the idea that both uh, the coach and the uh, client are very active in the process, is that clients have the answers or can find them. Nothing is wrong or broken. There's no need to fix the client. The coach doesn't have the answers. The coach has questions. Sometimes clients don't think they have the answers. Sometimes they'd rather believe the expert has them. Okay, here's my reaction. Um, I like to default to that, but at least over my years as a coach, I have found that clients vary in terms of how much, how rich their fund of ideas or solutions are. And while I normally start by seeing if I can get a solution to come from them, I'll say, well, what do you think the best solution is? And I'll even acknowledge that very often the best ideas come from the client. But if they're stuck, uh, I will very often, but with, with tact, so that I'm not disempowering them, I will either give them a couple of choices and say, do either of these resonate with you? Or if there's just one thing that comes to mind, I'll say, I'm wondering whether this might be a good idea. What do you think? So I am not eliminating the client's agency. I am where they can't come up with their own solutions, um, offering tactful suggestions. There have been many clients who said they're frustrated with certain coaches and counselors and therapists who kept insisting that the client come up with their own answers. I think that's a wise default. I don't think it's the only answer. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. Often there's a desire to buy the answers in a package program that, uh, than to do the work to find a solution. Too often such clients end up with an empty package. I guess I just, it's the same disagreement I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, no, I guess not. Um, while I think that there is huge value in customization, which is what I do, I work one-on-one, -on -one, but there is value to a structured program, even if it's not individualized. For example, let's say you're crappy at time management. Reading an article or taking a short class on the, you know, uh, on a, that offers a buffet of options on time management would certainly be, even though it's a, quote, package, can certainly be wise. I'm not a big fan of black and white reasoning. You know, package is bad, individualization good. I like the word nuance, one of my f favorite words in the English language. Actually, my students at, <laughs> at UCSF roll their eyes when I, cause I always use the, uh, I use the word nuance so often. Anyway, um, I'm going to continue reading now from this uh, book, Coactive Coaching. When clients look inside with the help of a coach, they'll find they know themselves, their strengths and limitations. They'll also discover what they want, what they fear what motivates them, and what holds them back, their purpose and their vision, and where they sell out. That's great. I think that's a wonderful list, by the way. They may never have sought the answer before the coach asks the question, the questions that create the channel for self-discovery, but the answer is there. I love the general concept again, but I think one size does not fit all. And I, you know, if the, if the answers do not come, I do think the coach, especially it depends on their skill set, how much they know, how talented they are, how, you know, what is their fund of knowledge? Depending on that, I think the coach is wise to either just ask questions, listen well, or tactfully offer suggestions. I'm continuing to read. When clients come up with their own answers, they're more likely to follow through with action. That's absolutely true. And that's why I default to that. I think it's wise to do that. Continuing to read, also the client sets the agenda. The coach's job is to make sure the agenda doesn't get lost. Holding the client's agenda is such an important coactive coaching concept that we at the Coach Coactive Training Institute use that phrase over and over again. 
Again, I think more nuance is required. Sometimes the stated agenda of the client is exactly what they want to focus on. And I, and I think it's wise to start there. But sometimes in the course of exploring that agenda and, and other, I, other agendas that may not have been explicitly addressed may be more at root. So the typical psychologist one is, you know, they're saying they're really mad at their employer or whatever, and they're sick and tired of corporate America or whatever, and they don't want to look for a job in it. But sometimes with some questioning, the root is not really that. The root is fear, fear that they're incompetent or whatever. And so that's not an agenda item they would have come up with, but it's nonetheless legitimate grounds for at least exploration. I mean, if you're not a trained psychotherapist, there's, there's limits to how far you want to go. There's always gray area. But exploring that at least briefly, you know, not in a horrible confrontational uh, primal scream way, but exploring it at least cognitively can be a useful thing to do, even if it wasn't their agenda. Okay. Coaching, and then back to reading. Coaching is different from consulting. For example, I, I've got to adjust this here because I'm not able to see this well. So let me do this and see if that helps. And I'm going to move this. For, indulge me. I'm so sorry. One more second and I think we're good. Okay. I'm reading again from the book. Coaching is different from consulting. For example, where the consultant brings specialized expertise and very often sets the agenda. As I and this is my again my comment. Again, depending on the client's need and the coach's expertise, the amount of consulting that is offering suggestions versus f just facilitating their thinking will vary. Come back to reading. A common misunderstanding about coaching is it is just about getting things done. Because of this misunderstanding, coaching has been compared to hiring a nagging parent to be sure your bed is made, your homework is done. But coaching isn't just about action. It is as important about continuing to learn. So we say, we, meaning we at the Coaches Coactive Training Institute, say that the other half of the coach's job is to, quote, deep the learning. And I agree with that. You know, it's not just, it's like, if you help somebody solve a problem right then and there, it's like uh, giving them a fish. But if you teach him some things, some tools, psychological or practical, that could be applied in the future, you're teaching him how to fish, and therefore he eats for life or she eats for life. So yes, I certainly agree with that coaching model that it's not just to solve problems, but it's to teach people skills, attitudinal changes, knowledge that could be applied more broadly long after the coach's relationship with the client is over. I have clients who are just one session wonders, uh, and they get a lot, hopefully, from me in one session. On the other end, I have a few clients who I've seen for over 20 years, uh, period, a periodically, not every week or every month. Some, it's going to vary on their needs. Sometimes they like going to the dentist. They see me twice a year for a, two, for a cleaning. <laughs> anyway, back to reading. The coach listens to the words that come from the client, of course, but the real listening of coaching picks up emotion, body language, mood, pace, and energy. And yes, I think any of you who are watching, who are counselors or coaches or whatever, it really, I, I mean, these are certainly, I won't say more important than the words or less, but they certainly are important. I'll repeat them. The real listening of coaching picks up emotion, body language, usually changes in body language, mood, pace, including changes of pace, and energy, including changes of energy. That can tell you a lot. Continuing to read. While coaching in person adds the visual dimension, it can also be a distraction. Coaches, counselors who practice telephone or Zoom coaching develop over time, I've added telephone or Zoom, you know, anyway, I've added the Zoom. Coaching <laughs> develop over time a very strong ability to read the nuances of tone and energy from clients. Remote coaching, of course, is also convenient. I have found that. I find that when I have a client by phone, even just by phone, so I'm only hearing the auditory, I am really listening even more carefully than when they're in person because I know I only have the auditory. So I wouldn't, you know, so I have some of my clients who just absolutely want to see me in person, a small percentage, and I see them socially distanced in my backyard. But um, most of them, you know, I will have usually the first session on Zoom and then subsequent sessions by phone. 
uh, and it really they agree quite immediately that it's as it's as helpful as a, 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 a phone session as helpful as a, a Zoom session or even an in-person session. And fine, the final paragraph I want to read to you from this book, Coactive Coaching. It says, accountability asks basic questions. What will you do? When will you do it? For how long? And how will I know you've done it? The coach and client often set up, sets up additional reporting structures for accountability. Daily phone calls, daily texts, once a week emails. Uh, if they're seeing each other, if they're having sessions less than once a week. Accountability, I'm back to reading. Accountability in the coaching relationship is judgment free. I agree with that. There is no shame or blame attached to whatever the client does or doesn't do. There's usually reasons. It's a good ba- if they don't do a lot, it's a good idea to to probe that. The objective, back to reading, the objective is action and learning, not specific results, at least in the short term. The client can learn as much from failure as from accomplishment. I certainly agree with that. In any event, those are some of the core tenets of coaching, specifically uh, as explained in the uh, classic book, Coactive Coaching. And uh, I hope whether you are a, uh, currently a client of someone or simply in self-help mode or you're a coach, therapist, counselor, whatever, that there is something of value either in what they've written or my, uh, my comments. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. And in any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.